Welcome back to Movie Recap Factory. Today we'll recap an action crime thriller film from 2013 titled Parker. Beware of the spoilers ahead, and without further ado, let's get started. The movie begins in Ohio State, where people are enjoying themselves at an annual fair. Among various people, Parker is a skilled thief who never targets vulnerable or innocent people. With a unique code of professional ethics, Parker works with a group of five guys, including Melander, Carlson, Ross, and Hardwick, to carry out the theft at the fair. As Parker dresses up as an older man, the remaining thugs wear Joker costumes to divert unwanted attention. While the thieves successfully break into the office and try to unlock the lockers, Parker gets a flashback of his girlfriend, Claire. It is revealed that Claire's father, Hurley, is Parker's mentor and is the one who invited him to work with his five men. As the men successfully leave the area after setting it on fire, Parker gets infuriated with Hardwick for endangering the lives of hundreds of people. Instead of dividing the money among the partners, another thug, Melander, informs the crew about another plan that will bring millions of dollars. When Parker refuses to help them, Melander locks the car doors and decides to kill Parker. Parker gets shot during the fighting, but successfully escapes through the window. As the other thieves also get critically injured, infuriated Melander orders his nephew Hardwick to finish Parker. Unwillingly, Hardwick pulls a fire at Parker, after which the thugs go and leave Parker behind in the lake. While lying there, Parker is rescued by a family who takes him to the hospital and manages to save his life. After regaining consciousness, Parker gets up and chokes a nurse to take his clothes to escape. As the police are outside for investigation, he uses an elderly patient to leave the hospital. Taking an ambulance, Parker treats his wounds and approaches a building whose owner has just left for work. After changing clothes and carrying a gun and some cash, Parker leaves with a bag in his hand. He steals a car parked outside the house and calls Mr. North, a friend of Hurley, to get new documents for himself. He robs a check cashing business to get money, shoots one owner in the leg, and steals a woman's car parked outside. Soon, he reaches Mr. North's place to prepare fake documents so he can buy a car and get a loan. Later, Parker calls Hurley and informs him about what happened during his last job. Now, he wants Melander's address so he can take his revenge. Hurley thinks it's not a good idea because Melander has extensive connections that will be a risk to Parker's life. Even after learning that Hardwick is a nephew of Danzinger, one of the biggest goons in Chicago, Parker is still adamant about catching the deceivers. After learning about Hardwick's brother Bobby's club's address, Parker approaches the area and chokes Bobby until he spits out where Melander and Hardwick are. As the goons are in Palm Beach, Florida, he calls Claire and Hurley and tells them to pack the bags for a vacation. When Hardwick learns that Parker is still alive, he tells Melander about it, who threatens him to handle the situation professionally by taking his uncle's help. Using their mob connections, the goons send a hitman named Kroll to chase Parker. To get Parker, Kroll breaks into Claire's house in an effort to abduct her, but fails after she escapes the house through the window. Claire busts the tires of Kroll's car and leaves the house in her vehicle. When Claire calls Parker and tells him about the situation, Parker instructs her to go to a fishing camp at Okeechobee and stay there until he picks her up. Arriving at North's place to pick up the documents, he witnesses three men, presumably working for Danzinger, lying on the floor with North's guard pointing a gun at them. North is infuriated with Parker for creating complications in his business, and he is adamant about not giving Parker his document. After a fight, Parker manages to take his new documents, according to which he is now Daniel Parman. Parker leaves the office and meets Hurley, who advises him to go with Claire on vacation and forget everything about the goons, but Parker refuses as he is determined to take revenge on Melander. Against Hurley's will, Parker devises a plan to buy a property at Palm Beach so he can access the goons easily. On the other hand, we see Leslie Rogers, a depressed, failed real estate salesperson who lives with her mother and has financial difficulties following a divorce. One of her colleagues, Amber, gets a new client, who is Parker, and Leslie decides to play a game and steal her client. She's not a thief, but too broke and depressed to follow the rules. After meeting Claire at Palm Beach, Parker heads his way with Leslie to see properties to buy. It seems like Leslie is attracted to Parker and might want a relationship with him for the first time after being divorced. While wandering around the area, Parker learns about Melander's residence. After showing Parker various houses nearby, Leslie invites him for a dinner, but he rejects, saying he has other plans. After taking the map to Melander's house, Parker breaks into his garage, attaches pistols under their tables, and ruins their guns. Before the goons can see him after returning from the restaurant, Parker manages to escape, but encounters Leslie outside the house. 
Parker thinks that Leslie is sent by someone, but she clarifies that no one knows she is here. Now, Leslie is suspecting that something is wrong with Parker, who had never owned or rented a car before in his life. As she has already searched about Parker, she is confused about why he had no mortgages and never had a credit card. Parker takes Leslie to her office, where she bursts into tears, talking about how she is fed up with her life. She puts a deal on the table to help Parker with his shady business in exchange for money to help her pay off her mortgages and loans. After saying that he will consider it, Parker leaves. The following day, while Leslie is drinking coffee at a cafe, she gets a call from Parker, who now agrees to lock the deal. Seeing Leslie excited, Jake Fernandez, the police officer and her admirer, follows her as she heads her way to meet Parker. Arriving at a building, Parker informs Leslie about Melander, who is living in Palm Beach to carry out a 70 million worth of jewelry robbery. Hearing about the jewelry, Leslie realizes that the goons might be planning to rob Clendon's jewels. Miriam Hope Clendon was the first lady of Palm Beach society, and when she died, she left the entire estate to Palm Beach. They are now auctioning off her $75 million jewelry collection. Considering it a risky task, Leslie decides to back off, but Parker reminds her that she has made a deal. While Parker and Leslie look outside the building, we see Melander and his thugs entering the building as auction arrangement service agents with the help of an inside man named James. After seeing Melander outside the building, Parker heads his way back to the hotel, where he confronts Kroll, who has reached here after getting information from North. Both engage in a brutal fight, compelling Parker to hit Kroll on his head. Kroll gets up and tries to stab him. Parker manages to kill Kroll by throwing him from his apartment. However, Parker survives the attack but gets critically injured in the process. Officer Jack approaches Leslie after the incident and inquires her about Parker. Without telling him anything about Parker, Leslie informs him that he is merely a client to her. As they talk, Leslie witnesses a broken door and blood in her kitchen sink. Later, her mother's dog enters the lounge, leaving red prints on the floor. Leslie panics, but somehow she manages to make Jack leave the house. Looking out the door, Leslie finds badly injured Parker, all soaked in blood after the fight. Seeing Parker in this condition, Leslie freaks out but is ordered by Parker to call a number from a payphone. On Parker's instructions, Leslie heads her way to her office so no one can doubt her. Returning from the office, she finds Claire sitting in the living room, stitching Parker's hand. After Claire leaves, Parker informs Leslie that the police officer is watching her. While Melander, Carlson, and Ross dress up as firefighters, Hardwick takes a boat into the ocean near the auction building. As the auction starts, fireworks are fired from the speakers, compelling the authorities to evacuate the building. Melander immediately approaches the area with his team and enters the room, pretending to be a firefighter. After successfully stealing the jewels, the goons put on their diving suits to approach Hardwick in the ocean. However, being in a restricted area, Hardwick is ordered to leave immediately by the officers. As officers are busy talking to Hardwick, the other three thugs manage to dive into the ocean without being noticed, and before the crew can return home after the robbery, Parker breaks into their house and takes his position. Meanwhile, Leslie arrives outside the house and tries to peek in through the window. As she sees the jewels from the window, Hardwick points a gun at her and takes her inside the house. Melander thinks that Parker is behind her and he is somewhere near. As Melander stays with Leslie, the other goons take a round of the house to see if Parker is inside. When Ross gets killed outside the house, Melander orders Hardwick to check why he hasn't returned yet. On the other hand, Leslie sees Parker's reflection in the mirror, allowing Melander to check where Leslie is constantly looking. Seeing Parker behind the door, Melander tries to shoot at him, but the gun doesn't work, allowing Parker to fight back and kill him. As Parker kills Melander, Leslie uses a weapon under the table to finish Carlson. After killing Hardwick too, Parker and Leslie escape the house with the jewels. In the car, Parker instructs Leslie to hide the jewels in her office's AC vent until he sends a man after three months. Six months later, Parker kills Danzinger because he is the one who sent Kroll on him. The movie ends with Leslie getting her share of the job in pizza boxes, which will make her wealthy enough not only to pay back her loans, but also to get financially stable for the rest of her life. If you already watched this movie, share your reviews with us in the comments below. And before you go, make sure to like this video and subscribe.